Oh, that sounds good. I like that. That sounds pretty good. We're not here for uh, my awesome drumming skills. We're here for the MFJ 1163, and this is a transceiver surge protector with capacitive decoupling and ultra fast MOV. I could not have said it better myself. You get four outlets included, and let's. Uh, I've already taken the screws out, so let's take a look inside. So the bottom comes off, all metal on the outside. There are mounting holes for you to mount this to the wall behind your shack or to the back of your ham radio workbench or to the top of your ham radio workbench if you are so inclined. We have a grounding lug which is connected to the outside of the box. And I don't see, I don't see where the box is connected. I don't see where the grounding lug is connected to the rest of the device. Maybe it's hidden in there somehow and I'm not aware of it, but I'm not seeing it from this side of things here. And we have a 30 amp fuse plugged in, even though it's a 25 amp device. And then inside it has the MFJ 1164 circuit board. And this is actually pretty genius of MFJ. I like, I like the way that this was done. This is a, a very standard practice where you try and make something that you can then make a couple of different levels of products out of. And the 1164 has um, line conditioning where the 1163 is just capacitive decoupling. And they are wired a little bit differently. So the 1163 has two capacitors here and two capacitors here and the 1164, the circuit board actually is lined up with capacitors and resistors here. So there's a little bit of a difference there. The way this thing is assembled is the circuit board is put in place and then the outlets are fed through the front of the case and then they are soldered onto the circuit board. So even if I were to undo the screws on the circuit board, I still couldn't get the circuit board out. So we can only look at one half of the circuit board, which is fine. We're going to take a look at what we've got here. First off, the circuit board itself is fairly high quality because these are, if they show up on camera, yeah, you can see the darker spots where there's no copper inside and then you can see all of the lighter spots where this is solid copper in there for your ground plane or your power distribution. So it's not all ground plane. Some of these are, um, this, this one here that you can see down the bottom is the neutral. This big one up here is the ground. And then you can also see the positive. Each of these locations for the inductors is a tap that goes through where there's actually a circuit break. So it would go through the inductor and come out the other side. Um, since the inductors are not on the 1163, they're just jumpered straight across with a, with a beefy piece of wire there. Okay, let's look at what is going on. The neutral wire comes in and it connects to this middle trace on the circuit board. You can almost just draw the schematic on your own here. And then where it would go through the L2 inductor, it's just a jumper bypass. So that's a straight through connection there, which then comes down and it connects to the neutral on each of the outlets from the underside. The ground connects to the board on this middle line, which comes through all over here, connects to the ground on those two pins, and then Somehow there's probably a via somewhere where it connects to the other side of the board. So it would go through the L3 inductor and then um, somehow it connects to the other side of the board so it can land on these two um, ground connectors here and you can see the, the trace on the circuit board there. The ground wire comes in from the outlet. This is uh, braided wire, connects to the fuse holder, comes out the other end of the fuse holder, connects to the circuit board moves all the way over to this L1 inductor and again it would go through the inductor in the 1164 but in 1163 it just does a bypass and that connects it to the other side of the circuit board. I can't see what it's doing but I can guarantee you that it's connected to the hot side from there. So you would have in the 1164 uh, three line conditioning inductors, in the 1163 you just have three bypass jumpers. The 1163, you have the capacitive decoupling, these two red ones, and then you have the MOV circuits, the two blue ones. The MOVs are designed to basically explode under high voltage conditions like lightning or other 
things that might happen in your house. Somebody connected something up backwards or whatever the case may be. Um, there's a bit of flux splatter on the board, but other than that, it's pretty good. There's a sticker on here that says this was made 1120, so November of last year as I'm recording this. And then um, back to the beginning of the video, this is in a nice metal case and there are a lot of people that swear by metal enclosed surge protectors because of the way that they behave in the situation where you might have a fire in your shack and this would not spread the fire as much as a plastic one would. So I'm going to get this one back together. Over here on the side is a video that I think you would like to see next. Thanks for being awesome.